Welcome to our youth adult service. And uh, if you're online, uh, thank you for uh, tuning in. And uh, uh, we got some uh, fun things in store for today. And, and uh, pray it'll not only be fun, but spiritually profitable, right? <laughs> it's usually what we come to church for, right? All right. Well, I hope you're having a good week. And uh, boy, it sure turned fall quick, didn't it? Woo! <laughs> But I like the change of seasons. I wouldn't like to live in a place that it's just all one season. Lived in Arizona for a year, and uh, it, it went from scalding hot to, you know, it, it was pleasant. And then their winter was just kind of cool, got a little rain, but then it would warm back up into the 70s, you know, really crazy. But I like I like the uh, Midwest, Midwest seasons. Well, um, you know what? Um, if you didn't get one on the way in, make sure you get one on the way out. It's, a, it's an updated uh, uh, a scheduled calendar of events for October, okay? And so uh, I just want to highlight a few. Uh, this coming Sunday, we're going to have in the morning service, missionaries uh, Chuck and Wilma Lormis. And uh, next Wednesday... Uh, we're not going to have our regular youth adult service, but we're going to have uh, ladies faith walkers and model men, and we meet at 6.30. Okay, everybody say 6.30. 6.30. All right. So uh, we have a meal, and, uh, and so, um, uh, yeah, meet at 6.30. The ladies are going to meet in the fireside room, uh, guys in the uh, uh, Christian, uh, not youth center, <laughs> There it is, Life Center. I got youth on my mind. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. But we're doing traditional female and male around here. So, capiche? <laughs> right. All right. So, <clears throat> um, Sunday, October 16th, in the morning service, we're having water baptism. If you have not been baptized in water and you have given your life to Jesus, you need to get baptized in water. It doesn't matter how old you are. You know, if you, you may, well, I come to church for 20 years. If you haven't gotten baptized in water, you need to get baptized in water because being a Christian is following Jesus. Amen. And so that's on the 16th. The week before that, we're gonna, I'm going to have a water baptism class. It's going to be Sunday morning at 915 and so, um, and I'll give, give some instructions and assure everybody that you won't need floaters or anything like that. Um, okay, last announcement is on the 30th. Okay, uh, when, when's Halloween, kids? 31st. Okay, so on Sunday the 30th, the town is actually, the, the state police and the Department of Natural Resources are having a trunk or treat in Massac uh, State Park. And uh, our church is going to be a part of it, and we're going to take the church van. Uh, we're going to, it's from 5 to 8, isn't that correct, uh, Pastor Keith? From 5 to 8, so that'll be in lieu of regular uh, evening service. And this is going to be an outreach. Yeah, we're going to pass out candy. We're going to have fun if you want to dress up in a wholesome costume. Uh, you know, that's, that's good. Um, and we're going to hand out children's tracts. And uh, we're going to have uh, little New Testament Bibles to hand out to them. And so, uh, you know, the Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made, right? And so he even made the, the you know, uh, the 30th and the 31st. And we're going to have fun uh, just showing the love of Jesus. And, and so if you can be a part of that. And oh, and so uh, if on the um, every service you come to church, uh, you know, let's, let's start donating candy. You know, we'll, uh, we'll need to, anyway, just grab, whenever you go to the store, just grab an extra bag. And... Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, good point, yeah. So you don't want a, you don't want a big bag of loose M&Ms or something like that. Yeah, let... Okay. Okay, yep, very good. All righty, um, those are all my announcements. Why don't we pray and ask God to bless our time together this evening. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, 
we just thank you for your love for us, God. We thank you for this time that we have together and each and every person that was able to come here in, in, inside this church building and are watching online. And uh, Lord, we're going to have fun tonight, but God, we also uh, want your blessing. We want to meet with you, and, uh, and we know that's your heart, God. Just bless and encourage and strengthen each and every person tonight, and we thank you, Father, in Jesus' awesome name. Amen. All right. Well, I was uh, planning another game, and uh, but I ended up, I ended up going back to for tonight, Pictionary. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Beverly's excited. It seemed to be a, a hot game, and uh, this time uh, I have some word lists down. It's going to be easier on myself, and uh, and so um, so what we need to do uh, now. Not everybody needs to play, okay? If you, if, now, you got to be on a team, but you don't have to come up and draw, okay? So you can, you can be on a team, and you can help guess the word, all right? And, uh, but if you, if you don't want to get up and draw, that's fine, as long as there's more than one person <laughs> doing all the drawing, okay? All right, so um, you'll have a minute to draw, and after, if, you're, if your team doesn't guess it in that minute, and then, uh, and then the other team will get an opportunity, one, one chance to steal the point, okay? All right, so if you're drawing and, and your team doesn't get it and you're in frustration, you say, you know, it was a banana, you know, and then you just gave the point to the other team because they're going to say, banana, <laughs> you know? All right. All right, so um, let's, uh, we're going to have to move around. We got William and Judy on this team over here. And uh, so let's, let's get to moving around and try to make this even. All right, yeah. <laughs> we can do family feud with you guys. <laughs> okay. All righty. Boys, great. Beverly is pumped for this one. <laughs> All right. So um, we're going to do... Yeah, you need to be able to see. And when you draw, make sure you're standing off to one side or the other so your team can, can see the, the whiteboard. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Um, Jay, pick a number between 1 and 10. Oh, say it out loud. Okay, uh, Stacy, pick one. Uh, my number was 3, so <laughs> this team's first. You'll just have to, I was saying that before God. He knew my thoughts, so I was being honest. All right, so uh, somebody from this team, come on up and uh, draw. And... Uh, well, Zoe's about falling off the seat there. You want to you wanna be first? All right, let's give it up for Zoe. All right. Okay. Okay, they, these are going to be action words, okay? Pastor Keith, you got the uh, 
You got the, uh, the blow-up timer? All right. <laughs> Uh, move over to the side, Zoe. There you go, so they can see. <laughs> Stacy's got it's jump. Yep. All right, very good. All right. So you can give a mark for your team there. What's that? Oh, no, just a line. Yep. There you go. All right. So, all right. Beverly, you want? <laughs> What's that? I don't have Come on. You love Pictionary. Come on up here. Okay, now don't don't start it until uh, till they actually start drawing. Okay, here. Oh yeah. All right, go ahead. Dive. Hey, you got it. <laughs> okay, remember you can't you can't write words, uh, numbers, things like that. <laughs> All right, very good. I'll give yourself a uh, a mark. Okay, Is it anybody? You guys decided who's going next? Okay, we are tied. All right, Jamie, let's see here. All right, this okay, we're still on action words. Yeah, as soon as, as soon as you start drawing, the timer's going to start. Crawl, yeah, all right. Oh, you were you you were down to five seconds, I think, there, Jamie. All right, did you give yourself a mark? Okay, give yourself a mark there. No, no, he, he got it in five five seconds to spare. All right, who's who's the next person up on this team? You know, Sharon's got those eagle eyes now. <laughs>
<laughs> no. You might need to step off to the side a little more. I can't give you hints. <laughs> Mr. Universe, what, what are we on? What, what it's still action, action. It's action. <laughs> you can use the eraser and uh, make some changes if you need to. Oh, all right, don't, oh, no, no, stop, stop, stop. Okay, uh, you can talk amongst yourselves to get one guess. Once you present it, that's the only one. It'd be good if we could guess that. <laughs> it was a good try. Hey, you're going to give it away? Careful. <laughs> Okay, you guys got something? No. What, what was it, Robert? Yawn. Yawn. <laughs> all right. So, all right, somebody from this team. Okay, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna switch to objects. We're going to switch to objects. Okay. You want to go, William? All right. Okay. Bird bath. Okay. No, no alcohol in this game. <laughs> the pastor's wife is guessing a martini. <laughs> we don't drink. try good try all right you guys didn't guess it so you can talk amongst yourself if you want <laughs> is that your answer no it was a bird bath <laughs> <laughs> All right. You you have you have opportunity to tie it up again now cuz you were behind cuz you didn't get the last one. So, uh who's going to draw? Hey. All right. Okay, we're still on objects. Swing 
Oh, you got it. Wow. All right, it is now tied. Good job, Jay. All right. Okay, we're on, we're on this team now. You can't write. If you want to use the eraser, you all, you can do that too. So <laughs> I'm just letting everybody know. You know, <laughs> I told the uh, Robert that too. Oh, wait, 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 wait. All right, so I didn't hear much of anything but cities and skyscrapers. Okay, you guys want to talk amongst yourselves and give you a, give you a few seconds. All right, salt and pepper shakers. <laughs> oh. All right. Yeah, I was I was thinking if if you would have I was thinking if you would have had a plate and like them tilting and like it's sprinkling out or something, that probably would have done it. All right, so eight, you guys are tied now. Yeah. And my Safonda's phone. Oh, Safonda's next? Yeah. Well, Come on there. down. Yeah. All right. Okay, uh, these are going to be a little more difficult. These are going to be buildings. Buildings. All right. Church would be too easy. Yeah, now we got a fast drawer. This is how it's done. <laughs> schoolhouse, schoolhouse. Whoa, good job, schoolhouse. <laughs> Who's going to try it on this side? Okay, this is going to be this is going to be difficult, but it can be done. buildings. Okay. Can you yeah, you want to kind of move so they can see. There you go.
library. Courthouse. Yep, courthouse. There you go. Good job. <laughs> yeah, what, what I was thinking, and I, it's easier for me because I, you know, got the words. But I was thinking if you, if you would have draw the scales, the scales on top of the courthouse, that would have been a little, or, or like a gavel. Yeah. All right, so let's see, which team went first? Okay. We, you guys are tied now, right? No, no, you're not. So wait, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's on this side. Okay. So you guys are tied. And this team went first, correct? All right. So you guys can either win it or it's going to continue to be tied. Tied. Okay, I'm going to go back to object, okay? I'm going to go back to objects. <laughs> well, Beverly, you can, Beverly, you can go again. <laughs> oh, po positive peer pressure. <laughs> See, even when you're adults, peer pressure never ends. All right. <laughs> okay, this is going to be object. Okay, here, I'll get it. I'll get in this side. We don't want to be too close to. So we, oh, here, come over here. Oh. A what? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Yes. Whoa. <laughs> good job. Good job. All right. This team has officially won. Yeah, because they went, they went first, and you guys were ending the round in your head. So, all right. Good job. All right. Everybody's good sports. <laughs> all right. I mean, we could continue to go on if you give it. <laughs> Beverly's like, yeah, let's continue. <laughs> What's that? Oh, Zoe wants to continue also. Tell you what, we'll leave it up to the winning team. Either we can continue for another round and you can hang on to your uh, win or it might turn into a tie. Do another one? All right, okay, we're gonna do another one. All right, Zoe, you wanna come draw again? All right, whoops. Do we just keep these up there? Yeah, yeah, keep that up there. All right, so, okay, hold on, let me think here. Okay, this is uh, back to action. Okay, uh, a, a verb, action, action, doing something. Okay. okay. Instead of an object. Yeah, okay. I can do that. Okay, all righty. This is an action. Go ahead, uh, Pastor Keith. Hey. In,
Oh. All right. It was good. Good job, Zoe. Good job. No. What was it, Zoe? Raking leaves. <laughs> All right. Okay. Beverly's back up. Yeah, painting. Wow. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> yes, and that's five. Yeah. All right, you guys are the winners, winners. Yeah. All right. Good job. And everybody was a good sport. Yeah, at the end. At the end, we'll give you. <laughs> All right. Uh, worship team, why don't you come on up? Right, good job. All right. Well, let's uh, let's turn our hearts uh, toward the Lord, and and uh, we're gonna have a time of worship, and let's let's pray again. Lord, we just God, we ask for your grace, Lord, to uh, to just. Lord, your word t says to uh, enter your gates with thanksgiving in our hearts and your courts with praise. And uh, Lord, no matter how our week has been, whether it's been great or awful or however today has been, Lord, uh, help us to just worship you, to lift up our hearts and our eyes upon you. And as we do that, Lord, you're going to lift us up. God, you're going to encourage us. You're going to bless us. And uh, so help us, Lord. King David... It, he, he said, bless the Lord, all, all my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name. And I just picture King David just grabbing himself by the scuff of the neck and saying, David, you're going to praise the Lord whether you feel like it or not. And, uh, and Lord, you blessed him. So help us, Lord, however our day has been to do that. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand up. We're going to worship. Praise the Lord. It's hard to worship the Lord sitting down. Ain't it? That's some good English, isn't it? Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Jesus on the inside, he's working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Changing. 
is you, Jesus. Jesus at the Amen. center of it all. Hallelujah. Amen. We sung this a couple of weeks ago. You might remember. Sing along. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, center of my life. Jesus be the center of my life. Oh, Jesus be the center of my life. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus be the center of my church. Oh, Jesus be the center of my church. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Sorry. Jesus. <clears throat> he is exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise him. He is exalted forever. Let's 
sing it one more time. Hallelujah. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted and I will. Hallelujah. Thank you that we can lift up your name, Father. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus.
worthy God. You are worthy God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's bask in his presence, folks. Bask in his presence. He's here. Oh, we don't need to rush. Don't need to hurry. He's here. He's here. He's here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, O God. Thank you, O God. We need you, Lord. We need your presence, Father. More than anything else, that you be glorified, God. That you be glorified, Father, in everything that we say, everything that we do, everywhere we go. Father, we need you. Oh, we need you. Holy Spirit, we've got to have your presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You are all we need. God is telling us that he is all we need. He loves us. Oh, he loves us. Rely on him. Rely on him. He sees everything. He knows everything. And he loves us. Oh, we glorify him. Glorify him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glorify his name. Oh. You know, as pastor, I know um, what just happened might might be a little different than, uh, and, and it might be new and, and wondering what, what that was, but the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I don't do not want you to be unaware you know that when you were pagans, you used to be enticed and led astray by mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one speaking by the Spirit of God can say Jesus is cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are different gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different ministries, but the same Lord. And there are different activities, but the same God works all of them in each person. A manifestation of the Spirit is given to each person for the common good. To one is given the message of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the message of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the performing of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. One and the same Spirit is active in all these, distributing to each person as he wills. And God is a supernatural God. And 
in Lighthouse Assembly of God Church, we want everything the Lord has for us according to the Bible. And so what, what, what you just heard was God using a person in the gifts of tongues. It's a real language, though we don't know what it is. And then the Holy Spirit using another person to interpret that message to, to let us know what God is saying to us. Why does God do it like that? Well, he's God and it's in the book. And so be encouraged. God is saying he broke, you know, I planned the service. Beverly did her part in picking the songs, but God wanted to break in and say, hey, I love you. I love you and I'm with you and I'm helping you in your problems and keep, keep your eyes on me. You know, that's an, and that's how you know it's a real, it's really from God. It's, it's going to be encouraging. It's going to be edifying. And uh, so praise the Lord. Yeah, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for Florida. It's that hurricane has made landfall, and so we do have family in Florida, so we need to be praying. Sandra's cousin, bad cancer. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. God, we're so thankful for your Holy Spirit. The wonderful work you're doing through your people, God. We look forward to even greater days ahead. And Father, we ask you to be with those in Florida. As I go through this hurricane, Lord, you know better than we do. And we ask you for protection and guidance. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for better things. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. Witness and testimonies will come out of your protection. God, we just ask you for this cousin, Lord, that you will do what needs to be done better than we know, God. I thank you and I praise you. We serve a healing God, healing in your wings, Father, and we thank you. We know you've done it before. You can do it again. And, Lord, other, other needs that may be represented in this house or watching online, you know, you know, you know. So, Father, we just ask you to minister. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what is yet to be done. As I said, and I'll continue, greater days are ahead than will lie behind through your Holy Spirit ministering to us and to us. We'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, it's a special, special time. It's that time we give back, that little bit that he's asked us to give back, our tithes and our offering. You know, our tithes is what he asked at 10%, and then offerings is over and above. And he can do more with a handful of dirt than we never do with a handful of gold. Well, Father, as we take this time now to give back that small part, Father, our tithes and offering unto you, we thank you, Lord, that we do have a privilege to give back to you. And God, for what you've done, we're looking forward to what's yet to come. We'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Bring your tithes and offerings. Hallelujah. Jesus on the inside. He's working, working on, on the, the outside. outside. Oh, oh, what a change, change in my life. life. Jesus on the inside, he's working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Jesus on the inside, he's working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Oh, what a change in my life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but I so enjoy these services. This is awesome, Pastor. Come and bless us, Pastor, with your word. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, worship team. All right. Praise God. God is so awesome. We, we serve a living God. Amen? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Well, I want to ask you, uh, what type of person comes to mind when you think of God? What, what comes to mind when you think of God? This is a rhetorical question. Um, maybe 
You might think of a, a stuffy banker. <laughs> um, you know, you might think, well, a, well, a stuffy banker, like, oh, you know, God's boring and just, you know, there's more fun things to do than to talk to God. And uh, what, what would come to mind? Another, another person that might come to mind is a police officer. It's just, stop, don't do that, don't do this. Get your life in line. Come on. All right? And some people, what comes to mind when they think of God, now they wouldn't say this. Computer. Right? Oh, if I, if I just say the right words, if I learn all these key principles for life, if I learn all these right things, and then bloop, 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 cha-ching, I'll get what I need. I'll get what I want. Or maybe you think of a king who is your friend, right? He's, he's the king, and he loves me. He's a, he's a friend. Well, you know, God is a relational God, and he created us to have a relationship with him. And the, in the Bible, God presents various pictures of himself. Okay, one day we're going to see him. We're going to see him with our own eyes. It's going to be awesome. And... Uh, but God gives us a picture throughout his word. Um, one of the pictures is that he is a loving father. He's a loving father. You know, not all of us have had wonderful examples of a father. I hope you did. But God is a loving, understanding, caring father. And Jesus, Jesus told the parable of a, of a man who had two sons, and the one son said, you know, give me my inheritance right now, Dad. I don't want to wait till you die. Just give me my inheritance now. He got the inheritance, and he went out, and he partied it up, and lived hard, and went through all the money. And the picture that Jesus, the Son of God, gives us of the Father in heaven is that that dad waited on his front porch just looking for his son to come back. He wasn't grumbling, oh, that rotten kid of mine, I worked hard all these years, he gets the inheritance and he blows it <laughs> on wine and women. And No, he was waiting for him to come back. He longed for him to come back. Another picture that we see in God's word is that God is a great, righteous, and just king. That's who he is. He is the king. And uh, so he's not a tyrant, okay? He's, 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 not a, he's righteous, he's just, and he's, he's majestic. And uh, there's some awesome pictures. Isaiah, Isaiah said in, in chapter 6, uh, when King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And the robe of his train, you know, the train of his robe filled the temple. And the, the doorposts were shaking. And, and these, these angelic beings, they had their seraphim, they had six wings. And they, they covered their eyes with two. They covered the, their wings, uh, uh, their feet with the, the other two. And they flew with the two. And they just cried, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. And... Uh, and really in that, and then in Ezekiel, he saw, he saw the Lord on a throne. And uh, remember, it talks about, it's kind of hard to understand the, the wheel in the middle of the wheel, one translation, or the wheel insect, intersecting another wheel. What, what we're seeing there is a picture of God's war throne. The kings in that time had these thrones that would go out on the battlefield and they had wheels and they would be moved by their servants. And, and so God was showing them, you know, these kings of the earth, they got their war thrones, I got my war throne. And it's just awesome. He's a great king. Another, another uh, picture that we have in the Bible is God being a just judge. Okay, he's not a mean judge. He's not a crotchety judge. But he's going to be righteous. And... There, there is a bit of a, 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 a good uh, of it, it ought to it ought to make a, it ought to sober us up that one day we're going to stand before God and give an account of our life. Now, for those of us who have come to Jesus, 
you know, we, we don't have to fear. We have the Lord. We have Jesus. And, and so we're coming before a father. But those who have rejected God's grace and rejected Jesus, it's going to be a serious matter because God's going to open the book of everybody's life, you know, and, and if, 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 you, if you don't have Jesus, you know, boy, the gavel's going to come down hard, and, you know, there's, it's pretty scary. But then another picture we see in God's Word is a kinsman redeemer. Now, that's, that's a word that, unless, you don't hear that nowadays, and unless you're reading the Bible, but it was back, back in history, and I don't think they do this anymore in the Middle East, but if, let's say, let's say you got yourself in debt, you got yourself in trouble, and back then you could say, okay, I'm going to be your indentured servant. You're, you're basically selling yourself to slavery uh, until you pay off the debt. But if you had a relative of yours that said, hey, I'll, you know, I'll flip the bill for you, I'll, I'll pay your debt, and then he could get you out of slavery. And that would be your kinsman redeemer. He's redeeming you out of slavery. Well, the Bible uh, uh, is real clear that Jesus is our kinsman redeemer. And it's an awesome thing that God became one of us. He, became, he, he took on flesh and blood. He became a human being so that he could be our kinsman and redeem us from sin and a, and a life sentence in hell. You know, all that. And so that's awesome what God did for us. And then we see another one, and this is a very common a uh, picture of God is that he's the good shepherd, that he cares about us and he's going to be with us in life and lead us and protect us and guide us. But this one, uh, this one, uh, I- unless you're in church, you don't really hear about this one in the world, that God also shows himself as the bridegroom and his people as his bride, okay? And, uh, so the Bible, the Bible says this in, in Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 2. Go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says, I remember the devotion of your youth, how as a bride you loved me and followed me through the wilderness through a land not sown. And throughout the book of Jeremiah, really Jer- the book of Jeremiah is God going through a divorce with his people. And it's, it's marriage, it's marriage uh, imagery through the whole thing that his people were being unfaithful. And then, and then we read this in the book of Revelation. Then the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, these are the true words of God. And so at the end, we have this picture that there's this big wedding taking place, and, and, and it's a marriage banquet with the Lord and his people. <clears throat> now, uh, then we read in the book of Ephesians, uh, the Bible says this, Wives, submit to your own husbands as you do the Lord. For the, let's see, For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit uh, to their husbands in everything. Okay, so what this verse of Scripture is saying is that our our marriage relationship on earth is really a reflection of God's relationship with us. So, and then, and then we read in Psalm 1611, I like the, the King James uh, Version, um, Thou will show me the path of life, in thy presence is fullness of joy, at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. Okay, so, um, this might seem really weird, a marriage imagery, imagery with God, okay? Um, okay, we don't, know. this isn't, it, this isn't weird, God created the relationships between a husband and wife to be the closest, most loving, transparent, enjoyable, life-giving relationship on earth. Okay, it's not a master-slave thing. It's a, this, is, this person is my best friend, and I can, I can share my heart with them. 
You know, uh, the, the, the part in the Bible that says, and they were naked and, and felt no shame, it's more than, okay, they didn't have any clothes, okay? It was, they were totally transparent. Their heart, they could share their thoughts. There wasn't any guilt. There wasn't any, well, you know, if I share that, you know, Adam's not going to like me, <laughs> you know, or, or vice versa. It, God meant our relationship to, to be transparent, enjoyable, life-giving. The closest person on this earth ought to be your spouse. Closer than your girlfriend, guys, closer than your guy friends, you know, than your buddies at work, whatever it is. It's like, that's the way God meant it to be. Now, you say, well, you know what, on earth, it's not really like that very much, is it? But you know what, Jesus, Jesus said what the problem was, Matthew 19, 8. Jesus said this, Jesus re, uh, replied, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard. But it was not this way from the beginning. See, that's the issue. If you, if you allow God's love to be in your heart and, and you treat each other in love, and, and, and you have that type of relationship, you know, you can, you can make it. I, I realize, you know, things, things are tough on this earth, but Jesus said it's because of hardness of heart. And so, you know what, sometimes, I'll be transparent, sometimes, you know, have you ever gotten kind of cold towards God? I don't really feel like praying. I don't really feel like reading the Bible. You know, I really don't feel like going to church. And you know what? When you get like that, the best thing you can do is be transparent to the Lord and say, God, my heart is, my heart is just kind of cold. It's just kind of not where it should be. And you know what God does? He doesn't whack you. <laughs> he softens your heart. And uh, God taught me as a young Christian, as a teenager, just be honest. Just be honest with the Lord. If you're getting attracted to some kind of sin, and don't, don't think you're going to hide it. You know, God already knows what's going on. You say, Lord, you know, I'm kind of wanting to do this thing, but I, I know it's going to be bad if I do it. And God changed my heart, and he does. He changes our heart. Just be honest with God. And so I want us to picture a healthy relationship between a husband and a wife. First of all, they love being together, right? They love being together. They love doing things together, whether working around the house, or in the yard, having fun, relaxing, watching TV. They just love being together more than anyone else. They want to be together. They love talking to each other, sharing their hearts, talking about their day, making plans, trying to figure out problems, just talking about stuff, right? Just love being together. They even love just sitting there quietly, just being close without even saying anything, you know? So the picture that you and I have of God in our mind is going to determine how we relate to him. If you picture God as a stuffy, matter-of-fact banker, type of person, you're really not going to want to spend time with God. Well, he's just no fun, <laughs> right? Or if you picture him as a police officer, you're going to be consumed with focusing on your own life, and I, I, I got to make sure I, I'm not doing anything wrong, and, and whenever you talk to God, you're, you're constantly examining yourself and trying to explain why you weren't just like Jesus in every little tiny area of your life that day, and you're just going to tell him how all the ways you fell short, and if you picture him like a computer, you're just going to be trying to find just the right words to say. If I can just get the right combination of words, I can just say the right prayer, I know this is going to happen. Or, you know, uh, and I know, you know, plenty of preachers said, seven keys to, <laughs> you know, and they, they give you the seven keys, and then the, or the six keys, or the four keys, and, and it's like, my Bible doesn't rattle around when I shake it. I don't hear, cha-ching, cha-ching, the keychains. But if you think of God like that, you're, you're just going to be looking for the, the right combination of stuff. So you can put it in the computer and get what you need. But you know what? If you picture God as your best loving friend you could ever have, 
You're going to drop your guard. You're going to open your heart. You're going to enjoy spending time with Jesus. And even as you go throughout the day, you're just going to have, you're just going to talk with him because you know he's there. God loves me. He's for me. He's not against me. Praise the Lord. He knows I'm not perfect. He's got me covered. You know, and so what should our personal time with God be like? Well, realize that you're loved by God and he enjoys spending time with you. Uh, when, I, when I was a teenager and God really revealed himself to me in, a, in an amazing way, and, uh, and I started getting busy, I'm working and I'm going out with friends, I'm trying to juggle a lot of stuff, and, and, and I'd be out with my friends and I'm like, oh Lord, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't get, get alone with you today. And you know what, it would never fail, time and time again, I would, uh, the song would come on the radio the next day, it, it was a... Uh, um, Let's see, it was, a, it was a brother and sister. Anyway, um, I miss my time with you. I know you've been busy. But anyway, it was on the Christian radio. Judy, you, I think you're shaking your head. No, <laughs> you're just saying, no, it's good, Pastor. <laughs> Whatever that song is, it's good. Um, yeah, I miss, I miss my time with you. And, and, it, and I'd be like, oh, Lord. And then so I'd have to repent. And, but it's awesome. God misses his time he, when, when we don't spend with him. And so uh, realize you're loved and he enjoys spending time with you. Secondly, you know, yes, he's awesome. Yes, he's a just and righteous king. And you know what? Yes, we should come to him in awe and worship. Okay, there, there's a fear of I'm going to be in trouble, but then there's also a reverential fear. You know, that's why it's good to get out in nature and and look around, and, and, you know, we went to the Grand Canyon for the first time uh, uh, the other year, and, and just seeing what God is doing, he's like, wow. You know, look up at the stars, like, wow, God, you know, look at your pet. <laughs> God made, made that critter. Mine in the middle of the night. <laughs> right, on the, right on the bedroom carpet, right in the middle of the night. I was sleeping good, Judy. I was, and that dog came in and threw up all over the place. <laughs> uh, poor thing, he wasn't feeling good. All. He, there's, these, there's these tree seed pods. I don't know what they are. They're really big. In the summer, he was eating them just fine. Now they turn black. <laughs> it didn't sit so good in his stomach this time. And uh, yeah, the dog, he, he forages. I've never seen a dog like that. He eats all kinds of roots. He, pulls, he, he could live just fine outdoors. But anyway, God made him that way, just crazy, crazy critter. But be in awe of God. God is awesome. God is, is amazing. You know, he, uh, it's amazing. He, he's, he's always right, but he's never arrogant. He's almighty, but he's never oppressive. He's just, but he's never, and I told you so. He's always loving. He's always gentle. The Bible says that he stoops down to make us great. That's, that's God. I mean, that's awesome. He's the only, if, if anyone had a right to be arrogant or an I told you so or condescending, it would be God because he is, there's no one who has more knowledge, more authority, more power than him, but yet he's gentle and humble and he just loves us and he wants to spend time with us. That's awesome. But also when you come to God, come to enjoy his presence. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. It's God wants us to spend time with him. And you know what? Talk openly to Jesus about your life, your joys, your frustrations, the things that get you mad, your heartaches, your concerns. Talk to him about it just like you would, you know, in a healthy marriage with your, with your wife your, or your husband, you'd or your best friend, you know, you could share anything with them, and you know they're not going to get on Facebook, you won't believe what my stupid husband said, <laughs> you know, or, or that's, a, that's a recipe for, <laughs> you know, divorce, but uh, you, can, you can just be honest and open, and God wants to hear from you, and you know what, God also wants to talk to you. The Bible says this, 
Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him and do not fret when people succeed in their ways when they carry out their wicked schemes. God says, be still before the Lord. Wait patiently. In Psalm 46, 10, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. And, uh, you know, there's, a, there's another verse before I um, go with this next point. This is Isaiah 50 and verse 4. The sovereign Lord has, inst- has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. In other words, you know what? Every day God wants to talk to you. He wants to give you answers to life's frustrations and problems, even answers at work. Um, Robert has an awesome testimony about that. He was a supervisor at Honeywell, and there was some issues at work, and and there was pressure on him to to get it fixed. And and he just said, Lord, I need help with this. And God gave him the answer. It was just awesome. And uh, God God wants to talk to you. But you know what? So you might say, well, Pastor Brad, how does God talk to you? Well, you know what? Through his word. I left my Bible on the pew. But through the Bible... If you're not reading your Bible every day, it's not that, oh, you're a bad Christian, you know, shame on you. It's no, you're, you're, you're preventing God. You're, you're, you're closing, you're closing your ears to God. You're not allowing him to speak to you. So open the Bible and you know what? Not only do that, and a lot of Christians, they, they fall into, I'm going to pray. And what praying means is giving God your whole long list of problems and then say, okay, take care of it. And now I'm going out the door. You know, it's a relationship. Be still and know that I am God and just be quiet before the Lord. Quiet your mind, your heart, and just be silent. And you know what? The Lord will speak to you. What, how he speaks to you, sometimes it is a still, small voice. You know, the Lord will speak to you. Other times he'll bring scriptures to mind. And God, even Christian songs, he'll bring a Christian song to mind. He'll speak to you. And, uh, and so just, just be silent and enjoy just being, being with the Lord. You don't have to always be talking. Just, you know, just enjoy being with him. So if you thought of God as some stuffy banker, a police officer, or a computer, get those images out of your head. Jesus loves you. He loves to spend time with you. He loves to hear what you have to say. And he also has a lot of things he wants to talk to you about. Praise God. You know what? We came to church this evening. And because you, if you didn't come tonight, you would have never heard the message from the Holy Spirit that out of all the billions of people on this earth, he loves you. He loves you. Isn't that awesome? Praise God. Last, last Sunday, we had an awesome message that Jesus was, was saying, you know, come to me with all your problems, big or small. Trust me. That's awesome. God, God loves us. And so when we come to church, we're giving God opportunity to speak to us. Praise the Lord. And... Uh, well, uh, worship team, come on forward. And um, let's see here. I don't know what. You just want to pick one of those songs. I guess I got all your songs here, Beverly. Yeah, that's fine. Glorify thy name. All right, let's all stand. And uh, we're, we're going to sing. We're going to sing just a real short time. I know, I know it's a little later right now. And, uh, and I, wa- I want us to pray. And you know what? We're going to pray and, and to ask the Lord to help you and I relate to him as he really is. And if you have a false picture of God in your mind, that he would just remove that, that the Lord would remove that from your mind so that you can have the relationship with God that he wants.
Amen. Jesus died so that you and rose again so that you and I could have a relationship with him. Maybe just the chorus to that. Yeah. Glorify the name.